Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. As usual, uh, joined by myself, Ben, and my colleague Lauren. How are you going? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Um, this is sort of a part, part two, two, sort of, yeah. It? But so before we get into it, um, please subscribe to our channel. Tell all your friends about us too. Get them to subscribe either via YouTube, your favourite podcast app, and you can join in on the conversation on this and all our past topics or anything you want to talk about camping related at the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Mm-hmm. So sort of part two. So we, we've done an episode, uh, we've had a chat already about my camp setup because um, we put out a a question on on the Facebook group and said yeah. to people, what do you want us to talk about? Give us a, some topic ideas. And we had heaps of comments, heaps of ideas, a um, bunch of stuff we already had listed down. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the common questions that comes up is people want to see our camp setups. And as we mentioned in the yeah. last episode, we're a little bit like, oh, I'm worried if you're going to sort of judge me on my camp setup because, it, I mean, I don't think mine's overly exciting. But that's what we talked about last time. But mm-hmm. today you're in the spotlight. This was Lisa Hawking's question, by the yeah. way. And we prefaced it that um, the topic sort of won because it had the most interactions. Yeah. Um, so peer pressure yeah. has pushed us into telling everyone about uh, camp setups. <laughs> uh, triggered. So uh, hopefully by the time this episode goes to air, my episode about my setup has already gone to yeah. air and today we're asking So make you, note, Kieran, obviously, who's our um, producer, yeah. he'll obviously make note that this goes after. So he has to get that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure's on him now. Um, so. Imagine if thanks. he punks us and just puts his first oh, as a joke. Yeah, and we look like absolute <laughs> fools. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Lisa, for the question and everyone else who's asked us so many times for mm-hmm. many years. And we will get a video walkthrough of these things eventually. We're going to be able to do yours at ACOF, as we mentioned in the last episode, ACOF mm-hmm. being the Camp Oven Festival up yep. in Queensland. Mill Mary. We're going to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and next time, I've got any camping trips planned anytime soon, but next time I've got the car packed, I will do a walkthrough. I really should have done it on my half lap yeah. because I had four months to do it. And yeah. I didn't. You didn't. <laughs> Because I was busy doing nothing Rubbish. otherwise. Anyway, another topic. So let's get started on your setup, okay. um, which is your your sprinter. But mm-hmm. uh, we'll start out with – so these are the same set of questions that you asked me. Mm-hmm. So type of camping that you do. So um, we do family camping and we do partnered camping. So um, – a lot of this stuff I know I've covered in previous episodes, so part of me feels like I always need to preface it with us. You would know. So I'm just going to run through the rest of the episode pretending like nobody knows. Well, other people might not have seen the other episode. That's true. So um, because we've got our kids sort of shared care in co-parenting situations, we get um, one weekend a fortnight ultimately where it's just the two of us, um, which we understandably take the opportunity to um, use to our fullest capabilities. So hit the road. Hit the road. So um yeah, we do both family with six and partnered with two. Mm-hmm. People so, types so, of camping. So you've got a vehicle mm-hmm. that caters for both of those? Correct. So we have a Mercedes Sprinter. It's a normal roof and it's a medium wheelbase. Um, so essentially it's exactly the same as an ambulance. Um, I don't know about other states, but it's just Oh, that's me dropping my pen there. Um, It's exactly the same as uh, ambulances in South Australia in terms of the actual vehicle. It just doesn't have, of course, all the additional external lighting and stuff like. um, (laughs) So you don't have ambulance lights. No, no, no. But I mean, (laughs) like uh, some people, (laughs) some people actually can purchase decommissioned ambulances oh, okay. right and it still has um, some of the body work at the top. It doesn't have the red and blue flashing lights, okay. but it does have the floodlights and the white LED oh, and the other sort of area lighting around okay. it. Ours isn't like that. Ours was actually a passenger vehicle. It was an old um, regional school bus, mm-hmm. but it's exactly the same size and shape as okay. the ambulances. So the sprinters come in. I also won this morning on my ride to work and it was mm. really long and I don't think yours would be as long as this one. But mm. what did you say something about the it's roof a, before? So it's just a something? standard roof. Yep. So what you does can that mean? get it well you can get a high roof oh, or okay. you can get a standard right. roof. Okay. Yep. So in the standard roof, uh I can stand up in it and mm. I'm I'm one seventy one centimeters or five foot six ish seven I don't know exactly which one yep. but my partner's six foot two and he can't so he sort of stands in and his Hunches head's got to be bowed over okay. um but if we were in a high roof he could stand up right so it's just a standard roof okay. and it's a medium wheelbase which 
which um, is obviously longer than the standard wheelbase, but mm-hmm. not as long as the big long wheelbase. Okay. And this is a bit of a work in progress for you. You've been working on it for a few years now, I think, haven't you? And uh, it's we bought still- it. I'm pretty sure we bought it about a year ago, okay. maybe between a year and a year and a half ago. Okay. So, um, I think we actually bought it sort of in the early stages of the podcast because I think I remember talking yeah. about how we'd just bought it. Yep. So, yeah, less than two years ago. So you're you're limited in terms of certain accessibility with that, in t- like what sort of road, obviously bitumen and yeah. dirt roads, but say yeah. Udendata track or Streslecky track, uh, or is that – Well, if you go off that? what Kevin says, we probably could do the Udendata track if we were well prepared, but mm-hmm. realistically it's just a, a standard two-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we do need to upgrade the tyres. Uh, we want to get 70, 30 tyres because mm-hmm. we do do quite a lot of off-roading on um, like those compressed limestone tracks or gravel mm-hmm. tracks and stuff. Um, we have done a couple of sandy tracks, but obviously nothing – you know, if we keep up good pace and it's, you know, a relatively well-maintained sand track, it's fine. Um, we've done sort of, yeah, we we do go off-road with it with it quite a bit. Um, just understand the limitations. Long yeah, wheelbase, un- you don't have to clear understand the limitations. It's, it's not, um, yeah, I think with better tyres uh, we will be great. And we need to do a suspension upgrade. It's leaf sprung. So, oh, um, right. Uh, at the back. Mm-hmm. Um, so whilst that's okay, but we do need to put like new shocks and stuff in it. It's just there is a couple of maintenance things we need to do. But we've taken it a lot of places and um, been really happy with how it goes. So, so with good tyre, with so 70, 30 tyres, like if yeah. you've got a truck tyre, 70, 30 means 70% road, 30% off-road, so they're designed for that sort of yeah. scenario of better shocks. You could take that on. You could. Tri- but with, the, the, considering that. The thing is, because um, of the kind of vehicle it is, technically it's like commercial vehicle. Yep. So we're doing a bit of investigation with tyres at the moment because there's not really a 70-30 or a straight swap tyre that works with the right. vehicle. So we actually will probably need to get different rims and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's a process that we're looking into okay. at the moment. So. So the interior fit out is a bit of, if you've done it yourself and it's a, it's a yep. work in progress, but how does your, uh, uh, we've written tent sleeping shelter, but obviously mm-hmm. you, you sleep in the van, so tents yep. are relevant, but how have you got that? Yep. So up? we've got, um, it was originally a 12 seater. Mm-hmm. So what we've done is we've pulled out um, the back two rows. Hang on. <laughs> just, yeah, just so we yeah, just doing some maths in my head. So we pulled out the back two rows of seats, um, and because what has it's got in the bottom of the van is um, channels mm-hmm. that the seats bolt into, so that you can change the configurations and all that sort of jazz. And we've kept one row of three seats. So basically, there's three in the front, so two passengers and a driver, mm-hmm. and then we've got a row of three in the back. Mm-hmm. So basically what that means is that row of three can actually be easily removed if we need to. I mean, if, if we're just popping a roll right away real quick, we just keep all the seats in. But if we're going for three days or more and it's just Jesse and I, we 100% remove those seats because it's super easy. It's like a five-minute job. And because yep. they bolt into the tracks, there's no easy in and out. dramas and the seat belts are all – it's all connected in this one seat, oh, okay. seat array. Right, okay. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so what we've got inside the van is we've built a platform for the mattress mm-hmm. and we have got um, sort of underneath that all drawer systems, which I'll talk about later. So yes, we sleep in the van and then when we're going with the kids, we have a couple of Swagger 3Ps, mm-hmm. super quick, super easy to put up. Yeah, great for kids. Great for kids and there's loads of space in there. They're great for everybody but like really great if you need a couple of extra tents with loads mm. of room, nice and easy, kids can put them up by themselves, yeah. pack them down by themselves. Um, and, yeah, they've recently on a trip we went to, we got really hammered with rain and they did quite well because they got a slightly lower waterhead rating than some of the other sort of standard like gold range of common tents and whatever, but yeah. they did really still, well. It's still 1,500. I think, yeah, it's head, 50, I think it's 1,500. It's and good we, for most But rain. it did really well. Yeah. So, so yeah. That's inside. What about um, 
Sorry, is that your, is that your setup? Yeah, so yep. we've got the two swaggers yep. um, for the kids to sleep in and then we, we sleep in the van. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what about other shelter, van awnings, mm-hmm. um, ground sheets? Uh, how do you set up a living space? I, I know you've talked previously about your big canvas sort of tarp yeah. that you set up. So, yeah, we do have a massive canvas tarp shelter. Um, it's a big truck, canvas truck tarp, I think six by eight maybe I think off the top of my head meters Mm -hmm. um and yeah we've uh built a custom frame for that we've got our own sort of wooden poles and um brackets that we got a a fabricator friend to do Mm -hmm. and that's huge and it's excellent for group camping and it's excellent for winter because we have a massive amount of space and summer if there's no natural shade Mm -hmm. Um, but we don't really, because it's quite large, it doesn't take up much room to pack, but it does, it's, you know, potentially takes 20 to half an hour to set it all up properly. So if it's just Jesse and I, we haven't had a shelter for a while because we don't usually bother to take that. Um, but recently I've bought a super peg outbound shield. Six oh, okay. awning. Yep. Freestanding. Which is 360. Freestanding. Uh, not 360, 270. 270. Sorry. Yep. And I've had it on the van for a couple of weeks and it is awesome. Yep. Like genuinely awesome. We have looked at awnings and stuff before in the past, but given the height of the vehicle, which I think is 2.5 or 6 or something, it's really mm-hmm. tall. And then with roof rack sort of stuff on the top, mm-hmm. there hasn't been any 270 degree awning realistically before um, with poles because it exceeds the maximum pole height. Right. And then, you know, same with pull-out awnings and stuff like that. You can – there is a little – a bit of flex with a pull-out awning. Mm, you can it angle it down, down a little bit. Yep. But even still, it's just – it's been really challenging to find something that suits. And so when we saw this awning that that we were stocking with Super Peg, mm. it was very much a situation of, oh, my God, that's going to be awesome. And it is really awesome. So that's your shelter instead of your big canvas top? It's that's, not that's instead, your, but that's what we have on the van. When it's just two of you, it's probably enough though. And when it's just two of us and then we went away for the weekend with all six of us and it was really great and it was enough. Okay. So it's like I think that if we're going to go away for, you know, two days or just the weekend and it, if it's just the two of us or all of us, it's more than enough and it goes – fully covers the whole length of, of our vehicle and the whole back half as well. Right. So so I guess if you have your the truck type you're talking about, mm-hmm. you, you need a fair bit of space, don't you, to set that up with guy ropes and your sprinter. So yeah. so does the um the super peg warning allow you to maybe fit into a smaller campsite? Definitely. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um it does definitely allow us to fit into a smaller campsite. Often we'll, you know, if we're taking the truck uh shelter um, what we try and do is put the kids' tents up just underneath the the rim of the shelter as mm-hmm. well because there's enough room to do that. So mm-hmm. we really only need like the van and the shelter next to it. And often if we're getting a caravan site, for example, like yep. the standard site, that generally we can do the trick for that. Yep. Um, but, yeah, nothing smaller. You probably wouldn't fit your big type shelter on a caravan site with your sprinter, I'm assuming. I'm picturing quite a – uh, the shelter itself is quite big, plus the guy ropes would be quite a bit of space, wouldn't it? Yes, but I think because generally the guy ropes, um, we don't have to peg them out too far because oh, okay. the, the structure of the, the tarp shelter is primarily supported and held by the A-frame. We just have some a couple of shorter poles on the edge that are maybe a maximum of a metre, metre and a half, um, and then it's we can usually just peg them almost directly down oh, to okay. help sort of keep them in place. Right, okay. So there's not massive guy ropes out to the side, and in that situation when we're setting up like that, the van butts right up next to the sh- end of the shelter, so we go out of the van straight into that. So right. um, we probably can get away with it on okay. a caravan. Yep. Okay, we've got options anyway. Yeah. So anyway, moving on, um, sleep systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously you've got a mat in the van. What do the kids use? So in the van we actually have a proper 
residential mattress. Like I think it's like a, Nah, it's like a, we've got a koala mattress at home and it's sort of like a sim, not a koala, but a similar type brand one okay. that we got off Gumtree that was for free, basically brand right. new. Yep. Um, and that's because my partner is a giant princess in a pea, even more than <laughs> you and your two bloody pillows, and he won't sleep on anything other than a proper mattress. So my two, it was the, the pillows were this big, all right? So <laughs> what I used two pillows. Yeah. Anyway, that's the So, last yeah, episode. we have to sleep on a proper mattress. Um, and then obviously we've just got our normal bedding and we just chuck our doona in and we have our normal pillows. Mm-hmm. So it's basically like sleeping on your bed at home, which it, I know is super fancy. The kids, we've got a couple of old bomber pads. So those old sort of which 2D. Zem- Zempire. Zempire um, bomber pads. Self-inflating mats. Yep. Self-inflating. They're not so self-inflating anymore. We've had them for maybe five plus years now. Um which I and I will be upgrading them just because they're huge and they're heavy and they're bulky. Yep. Um, I'm probably going to upgrade them to something like like I don't know what they're called now. They they used to be the old sin mats or down mats. Exped they're mostly air filled, but they're hev- really heavily insulated. Yeah, they're still called um, sin. Yeah, are they? Yeah. yeah. So I want to get a, get those for the kids because also obviously I have to take four of them. Mm. Um, and they pack super compact. Yep. And then they sleep in uh, Austrail cotton canvas jumbo sleep sleeping bags. bags. So they've got, yeah, the big cotton canvas and it's like flannel on the inside mm-hmm. and super insulated. And we've also got Coleman fleece liners to go in them if we're going somewhere cold. Yep. So this is why you need the sprinter, right? Because by the time you add all that up, it's it's quite a bit of storage space. Yeah. Because they're built bulky sleeping bags. So you've got four of them, yep. the mats. The swaggers, that's that's a lot of space yeah. for the kids. But I suppose that just goes in the living or the so store wh- space in the sprints or while you're travelling. And then- Yeah, so what the way that we've sort of d- designed underneath the bed um, is that from the inside of the van, as in not through the back doors, we've got a couple of um, quite large, deep storage drawers that slide out right. and we can fit in one of those um, – for all four of the kids' chairs and all four of their mats. Okay. And then in the other one we can fit some other stuff. So realistically on top of the bed we just have the tents and the sleeping bags right, okay. and our pillows. So um, it'd but be good yeah. to see a video of this to see how it all yeah. – it's a bit hard to explain it I suppose, but um, a run through a show. So you've got it all secured pretty well in. Pretty well. In it. It's not just floating around loose. It's got – everything's got a spot. Yep. Yep. Um, and pillows? Yeah, we just bring our pillows from, from home. home. Yep. Yeah. Uh, kitchen, we've run through kitchen a fair bit. But, we have. Um, so just brief over your, your kitchen. Setup. Yeah, we've sort of finally, it's gone through a couple of iterations, but we've finally settled on um, our camp kitchen, which is it pulls out from the rear of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. So I only have to open one of the barn doors to get the kitchen out. So the sprinter's barn doors. It's not yeah, it's a, barn it's doors. A, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, barn doors. So I only have to open one of the barn doors to get the kitchen out. Um and ultimately I had a suss of some, a couple of the drifter camp kitchen options because I really liked those and then um, just ultimately decided to build my own, own yeah. sort of similar kind of vibe to some of those drifter ones but mm-hmm. just meeting our actual needs. So ultimately I have before you even pull the kitchen out, there's like a little a table there which you can lift up and um, swing a little supporting thing out so mm-hmm. I don't have to pull anything out to have a little table. Yep. And what I'm currently working on at the moment, which I just did last night actually, it was really fun. So I ripped all the trim off the inside of the barn doors uh-huh. because on the door that I opened to get to the kitchen, recessed in that door cavity is like basically my beverage station where I'm going to have my Minimo and tea and coffee and oh, a okay. bunch of stuff like that. Yep. So then in the morning if I want to get up, I can make myself a hot beverage without necessarily disturbing my partner who might be still asleep in the van yep. and I don't have to pull the whole kitchen out. Yeah, okay. So then, yeah, when you pull it out, I've got, um, you know, the the stove that sits there and then underneath that we've got the gas bottle and, um, you know, chopping board and the bulkier pans and pots and whatever. Mm-hmm. And then next to that there's a I got three big slide-out drawers. So I have all my cutlery, spices, olive oil, condiments, yep. plates, bowls, everything sort of just sits there. Okay. And that pulls out and it's pretty much self-supporting, but we do have um, like a short – awning pole that 
can sort of sit up in there if it needs to be uh, leveled. Under the pull-out kitchen? Yeah, it just yep. goes next to the side, but you can pop it up under the pull-out kitchen if you okay. need to level it somehow. I've got and a little you, bubble how, level how do there. You, so there's the gas bottle, how, you've got that secured It's somehow. underneath the shelf that holds the okay. um, that holds the stove. Yep. So it is in the vehicle, but we do have one of those little, um, you know, the little gauge leak yep. mechanism things on it. Yep. And obviously the stove's disconnected. I, I disconnect the stove all the time right. unless I'm actively using it. Okay. We have um, upgraded our solar. Uh, we got a couple of, we had some awesome panels, but then we've got some even more awesome panels. So we have 600 watts of solar now Oh wow! because we will be putting an induction cooker okay, in there the instead gas. just because I don't want to carry the gas. Mm. And I looked into dual fuel, but I just, I just prefer to make it easy. Yep. And, you know, so um, we will be upgrading to an induction cooker in that space. Makes sense. If you've got a van set up like that with all that, you've got that, all that roof space yeah. used for solar. If you can do away with that gas bottle, that's, that's a, Another sleeping bag of storage yeah. space that you've got there. So yeah. probably more then. So, so then um, I also have two long drawers that go underneath the van, mm-hmm. the bed, underneath the bed, I'm sorry. So basically it's a single long drawer, um, one end on the inside of the van, one end on the outside of the van. Mm-hmm. So I can pull it out the back, but I can also pull it through to the inside. Are they on runners or are they just sort of sliding? Uh, like they're actually on, on bearings, ball bearings on a little channel. So we've right. got bearings sitting up and up and down. So a lot of the stuff that we've done with the van, the off the shelf options didn't work for us because we were really counting millimeters of space because mm. we needed something that was going to be super functional um, and maximize the space that we had underneath there. And then when you're using like draw rollers and you're using, you know, fridge slides and all that sort of jazz. Is it because the space and the size? Like it's you, the you space on the size and the heavy, yeah. the, you know, the heavy gauges that you need f- yep. for certain things. And then with this draw, the two long drawers that I have, because I wanted to be able to have one drawer that could push in or pull out, mm. there were no draw runners that both went ways. the two meter length and, you know, did both yep. ways. And yep. so we just used ball bearings um, and we've got like a little uh, rectangular trim that stuck to the wall when the bearings sit underneath and like a little track. Does that I make sense? Yeah, I want to see photos of that too. Because yeah. so, that's that's an issue I had with fridge slides and stuff is it works right, but then there's all that space with all the, the runners with the drawers and that sort of stuff and you lose it. And yeah. When you're trying to fit a lot in, you know, four centimetres or two to four centimetres. It's a lot is, of space you could, you to could lose. You fit a table down there Yeah, almost, totally. So, yeah. so it basically on the inside of that I have things like first aid kits and spares and cable ties and all that sort of jazz that I don't necessarily need all the time. Mm-hmm. And in the back I have pantry items and stuff and okay. it just I can feel chock-a-block. I can f- fill up a week's worth of, of pantry items and food in those two drawers on that end. Okay. And the, so the wash station and stuff is on that pull-out kitchen? No. So um, behind the other barn door we have our fridge that we've pulled out on a slide and, again, that's something that we we DIY'd that fridge slide because we could not have the weight and the, the gap. So basically it's a piece of plywood on some rollers that we got from Trailer Parts Direct which sits completely underneath the fridge. So there's no part of the drawer yeah, right. slide that sits on the outside. I'm really keen to see this. Yeah. yeah. So that and and again, that was a couple of iterations of trying to work through what worked for mm-hmm. us to get that right. And then um, the trim that I've ripped off on the left barn door is going to be our washing station. So behind there, there's going to be a recess that has all of our sponges and cloths mm-hmm. and dishwashing liquid and whatever. Um, and an idea that when we did our Kangaroo Island trip, there was a little gang of troopies that were traveling around with young couples and we sussed out some of what they'd done and they had a drop down table in their back door mm-hmm. that had pop up wash tub mm-hmm. recessed into that table. Right. So that's what I'm doing there. Yeah, I'm one. just going to have a wash station inside that door. Yep. Um, um, so yeah, work in progress there. And what about water? So water, we currently have a, like a large 70 litre or more, I think, potentially, like blow moulded tank. So it's a built in tank. Um, yep. it's not built in yet, but it sits down, it sits on the floor and can be anchored between where our bed and drawers are and and the kids are. Okay. Which we only um use for like shower water, dish water and stuff like that. And then we have those water cell um so X cells, the canvas ones, ones yep. for drinking water. Okay. Um 
we will eventually, because I'm covering some of the the future plans as we go as yeah. well, we will be eventually um, removing the spare wheel from under the van and having two, you know, 100, 150 litre water tanks under the van with a 12 volt pump, which we can sort of automatically yep. get water from. Okay. And then that way we can only fill, we can fill one if it's a shorter trip or we can do two or whatever. Yeah, cool. If we're going to brief over the kitchen, but it yeah. sounds cool. Uh, the video on this is going to be good because I think and explaining I just, it doesn't do any justice. It doesn't, but I just want to sort of also preface all this information with, you know, you see like hashtag van life and like all these people with their YouTube channels and their Instagram accounts with their van life and it's just all looks so fancy and it all looks so schmick and our van isn't necessarily like that because we – you know, my partner has really good building skills and he's an electrician, but we're not fancy. We don't have really fancy tools. We're trying to yep. do everything out of secondhand or salvaged materials. Um, you I know what it's I mean? Great though, it's, because it's, I mean, it's it is great, but it's not like it's a super pretty, pretty can, thing, you know? Great. You know what I'm I saying? I put carpet on the shelf in the back of my car. I thought that was fancy. That enough is I fancy. Like, so. Yeah. Okay. Moving on activities and games. So the kids have um, Kobo, which is like an alternative version to a Kindle. It's like an e-reader. So they right. can have all their books um, on there and they can do graphic novels and magazines, mm-hmm. all that sort of jazz. And they also have music. Yep. We take um, card games. So we have Uno, classic. Yep. We also have uh, Five Crowns, which is one. a really cool game. Um, okay. Yeah, basically. Write it down. Yeah, it's it's a cool game. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, we have Yahtzee, which is an oldie but a real goodie. It's super fun. Wow. It gets people like really, you know, there's a lot of like nail biting and, oh, what are you going to yeah. roll? And that's really cool and fun. I haven't played Yahtzee for a long time. Yeah. We also have Cards Against Humanity, uh-huh. but we have not the Family the Edition. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the Family Edition is still – pretty rude. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Okay. But it's, um, it, you know, it's been apparently developed by child psychologists and a bunch of stuff. So it's sort of, even though it's rude, safe rude. it's safe rude. <laughs> um, but that is so hilarious. Like we get some of the best nights of just sitting around cracking up laughing okay. with that. So, um, that's a really great one, especially of slightly older kids or kids <laughs> that think rudeness is, is funny. Get a bit of a gear um, on. Yeah, we do geocaching. So we have a geocaching account. So if we're going for a long drive and we're doing a rest stop, I mean, we won't specifically make stops for the geocaching because otherwise we'd never get anywhere. But if we're stopping for a rest stop, have a look for geocaching, run around, it gives you something extra to do instead of just get out, go to the toilet, go for a walk, you know. I didn't mention that in my episode, but I I do that all the time, especially for hikes. If they're like getting bored, you go, look, there's a geocache. It's real fun, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We also take bikes. Yep. Um, but generally at this stage we need to take the trailer if we're taking bikes. So yep. it has to be cost versus benefit, if that yep. makes sense. Yep. We have been looking at um, there are these wicked bike racks and I don't know if anybody's got them, but they sort of attach to your toe ball and then they hinge down flat, but mm. they're like um, you just hook your front wheel over them. They're like a giant outline of a sausage and they're all mm-hmm. sort of next to each other mm-hmm. and you can get six bikes on one rack and it lifts up. But yeah. because we want to move the wheel onto the back door, I'm not sure whether or not – that rack would still function with that wheel. So I've got to do a bit more yeah. investigating. But um, It's also limited with barn doors with a rack on the back. It becomes hard to access it. That's the yeah. issue I have with the patrol. And I think it's one of those things where we would probably only consider it if it was just easily removable, like if you could easily mm. slide it out of the tow ball or the tow ball sleeve or whatever yep. and just tuck it under the car if you're staying somewhere for a week or yep. something. Yep. Um, And the other thing that we always have is a handrail. So we've got some cavities underneath the front passenger seats and we always just have handrails, a couple of handrails in there. Yeah, for fishing um, and we have like a a gar rig um, Mm. or a paternoster rig. We've got a couple of basic rigs there. So if we are going somewhere, we can always easily just drop off and get some bait if we're close. Um, But it's just, yeah, in there for the sake of it. Good one. I think that's about it. So what do you like most? The flexibility. Yep. Yeah, that's what I like the most because obviously we've worked really hard to find a setup that can work for two people without being overkill Mm -hmm. and work for six people without being underkill. I think it's a really important thing, flexibility with a setup. Yeah. 
Um, now you've covered off a fair bit on probably the next few questions, what you change yeah. we'll start with. Um, you've sort of mentioned as you've gone, but is there anything else that is, is a big there's, thing? Yeah, there's nothing that I would change per se. Like everything that we've got, we've got planned for the vehicle, I, I don't necessarily consider a change, if that mm, makes sense. Because it's still developing. Because it, it's still developing and it's still like an unfinished project. I think with what we have right now and what we've already done, the only thing that I would potentially change is um, the fridge because um, to two draw fridges so we could run a freezer and we could run a fridge and yep. you know the fridge we've got right now is a Mike Coleman it's an 85 dual zone and it's a great fridge you can only run one side if you want so you mm-hmm. can sort of turn it off like that but it's it is a massive fridge and everything we went through with the draw slides and you know that was quite a headache and I think just for simplicity's sake yep draw fridges would would be really good yep Anything else? Um, Any change? No, no, not that no. I would change. I mean, we do talk about potentially getting a, a high roof in the future if we ever upgrade and a getting a four project. wheel, but it's just a four wheel drive version of the van. But yep. I don't know. It's a whole nother project. A whole nother project. So, past setups then, because you've, you've camped all your life. Yep. So, you've done all, all sorts of. All so, sorts. Let's, let's not go right back to the start. But prior, the last one prior we. To, yeah, prior to this, we had um, a high ace van that my partner used for work. Yep. Uh, and we had an ability to put a mattress in there and go if it was just the two of us with right. how it was set up. But if we went as a family, we had to take two vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that wasn't practical, but that was what we did to get us by. Also, because, you know, that I'm talking you know, the first couple of years into our blended family sort of situation, mm. you know. Um, before that, I just had the Coleman Montana family tent mm. and just car camped. Um, my folks have a T-van, so there have been occasions where we've obviously been able to borrow the T-van and, and stuff Which like that. Which is a fold-out camper. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a hard shell. Sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's not a teardrop camper, but it's sort of, it's like a four-wheel drive off-road yeah. um, hard shell camper trailer, like a little bedroom pod. And then, you know, your camp trailer tent and stuff mm-hmm. comes off of that. Um, yeah. And future and, setups, you've kind of covered that, but high roof. <laughs> High roof sprinter, you've talked a little bit in the past about four-wheel drive options. Like yeah, what happens I if think future, this is how it is for the foreseeable future with kids. I think we're not going to deviate from anything other than the van and I realistically don't think we're going to be upgrading the van while the kids are yep. young. Um, post kids, which potentially is only a couple of years away, we would probably get an electric troopy. We talked about this. We before, talked about didn't this. We? Yeah. We'll move to electric. Um, yeah. I think I definitely want to move to an electric and we'd have, yeah, like a troopy set up. I think yep. potentially, um, or like a, a, I don't, we wouldn't need a dual cab. Um, cab chassis. Yeah. Good if the, I don't know. the uh, electric technology moves on to being able to charge by solar too. So that would be you're, wicked. You're totally reliant upon. I think for me, the only thing that's sort of missing from, our current existing setup is being able to go real remote mm. because of our vehicle limitations. Yep. But there just wasn't a setup like that that worked for us that was in our uh, budget, yep. if that makes it's, sense. It's nice to say you're going to go really remote, right? Like it's, yeah. it's awesome to be set up like that. But in reality, if you want to get out camping a lot, it, you, it's not always ridiculously remote. Yeah. It's it's. Most campsites around Australia are accessible accessible. by an average car Um, and there's some remote locations that you've got to be better set up for. Um, But, yeah, if you you want quantity of camping, then probably your setup is good, especially with kids. Yeah. If you're just going to head out for months at a time and and go super remote, it's a different type of setup. It is just so easy, especially now we've got the kitchen and everything sort of tidied away. Mm. We literally – I say to my partner, maybe on a Wednesday or even sometimes a Thursday, do you want to go away tomorrow? And mm. it's like, yep. And ready to go. We're, we're pretty much ready to go. Yep. And f- for that, I'm really grateful for. And I don't think there's any other setup that I would be happy to swap to at this stage because yep. it's just so easy. I try and get mine to that point. It's a bit hard with kids, but just to be able to. Yeah. Go, I've got these tubs, they go in the car, I've got food in the fridge, and let's go. Yeah. 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 
But I do because want to, there's a couple of things like you mentioned about how you have that sort of bar across the back of your driver's seats and you can hang stuff off and, oh, yep. you know, that's something I was like, oh, make note of that because that's really cool. Just like there storage. is just little storage, more sort of practical space mm. saving ways that we need to A lot of DIY stuff on. too. You don't need to get custom stuff. You can make yeah. things out of. But it's like Basic currently the trim's this. ripped off the back of my two doors and they're my projects to yeah. get those two sessions. And then, yeah. you know, next minute my partner's ripped all the roof trim out and started working on electrics and whatever. So we're getting our internal lights done and we've literally just finished the solar panels on the roof mm. and then we're building the rest as a deck. So A deck? Yeah, like a, a super light pine deck so it's like on your car on the roof of the car so you we just can said just before it's not all glitzy fancy van life camping and you're building a deck on your car yeah it's <laughs> not glitzy van life like it's not in terms of you know the like aesthetic Backtrack. i don't Backtrack. know <laughs> no, but it's, you know, I'm sure people understand what i'm talking about with the aesthetic you know it's not yeah, i, I don't have the van life aesthetic but just because there's some real cool stuff that we're trying to do with my van. It doesn't mean that it's van life aesthetic. I don't know. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? You're not going to make a heap of money off your Instagram account. Yeah, like with I'm, the not, way I'm not trying to the way your van looks. influence my van. Do you know it? Does that make sense? <laughs> makes sense. But anything yeah. else? That was cool. I don't think there's I, anything else. I look forward to the walkthrough. I haven't seen your setup, but I'll get to see it at the Camp Oven Festival. I yeah. look forward to that and we'll do a bit of a walk around. We'll get um, Larry or Kieran or videographers to um, do a bit of a walk through with you. I did say to Jesse last night, I was like, hey, babe, not to like babe. freak you out or anything, but we're going to video the van when we yeah. go to Acoff. And he's like, Ugh. get your paintbrush out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's, um, I've committed to that, which means that I've lit the fire underneath both of us to get our, yeah, right. get our ducks in a row to finish some of these things off. So, All right. yeah. Well, we look forward to that. A few months' time, uh, hopefully we'll have that. Stay tuned. Uh, Try stay and get tuned. some photos yeah. in the meantime. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode. Don't forget to subscribe. Join in the conversation at the Facebook group, Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group, and we'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.